Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today, we're gonna to be making a pattern called Labyrinth. Now, this is a pattern from Calico Carriage Designs, designed by Debbie Matty, and it's really cool because there's no Y seams, there's no diamonds, and it looks really complex, but it's easy to make. Now, this pattern has four different sizes included in it, but no matter what size you're making, you're going to need six different fabrics and a background. It doesn't use a pre-cut, it just uses yardage. Now this project will look good in almost any color, but the thing you want to keep in mind is that you need some contrast. Not contrast for all the fabrics, but pairs of contrasting fabrics. So in the center here, you've got two fabrics that make up the star. They need to have some contrast. Then these next two around there, they need to have a little bit of contrast. And then these last two here, you need some contrast there as well. Now, all of these numbers up here, they correspond down here. They're all numbered again. It tells you exactly how much yardage you need for each numbered print for all the different sizes. Now, the first thing you wanna do is label all of your fabrics because if you don't, you can get really confused as to what goes where once you get them cut. Now the pattern gives you a little spot where you can put a little scrap of each piece on there so you'll know what's what. Now I didn't have a stapler, but I do have a sewing machine. So I cut a little bit of the fabrics, I numbered them all, and then I just stitched them together to help me remember which fabric is which. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get all of my pieces cut out. And I can't give you all the sizes because it's not my pattern, but Debbie Maddie writes really clear instructions so it'll be really easy to cut all your pieces to size. All of the cutting is now done and basically what we have is we have some squares, we have some squares that are slightly bigger, and then we have a variety of rectangles. So the first thing we're going to work with is these bigger squares. And here is where we're going to need our numbered pieces because we're going to make half square triangles, but there's a variety of them. So some we're going to use two different colors. Some we're gonna use a color and a background, and the pattern's going to tell you exactly how many you need of each combination. So I've got my first pair here, and we're going to put one of each right sides together, and we need to mark the back of the lighter square. So I'm gonna use a pencil on this one. You might wanna use a white chalk pencil, just something that you can see, and we wanna put a line right down the middle, right on the diagonal, and just draw it so you can see it. So if you find that you can't see it with your pencil there, you can always use something lighter. There, that's better. So you wanna take your two squares, make sure they're exactly lined up. And now we're going to stitch on both sides of this drawn line a quarter inch away from it. Now my presser foot is a quarter inch, so I can put the edge of the presser foot right on the line there and just carefully stitch down the one side. And then you can just swing it around and stitch down the other side. Now I'm going to cut right along that drawn line. And this is easiest with a ruler and your rotary cutter. And let's take these right to the ironing board. Now we want to press the seam allowances toward the darker fabric. The easiest way to do that is to put the lighter fabric down and then peel this open carefully so that we keep that seam nice and straight. And then just put your iron on it and then steam it. And the last step is to cut off these little dog ears. So that's that little extra triangle there. So I'm just gonna cut it even with the patchwork and the same thing on this corner here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make all of my half square triangles. 
there. Now that all of the half square triangle pieces are done, we've actually got all the pieces we need to lay out the quilt. Now normally there's a lot more steps before we can start laying out our quilt. But this pattern is actually much easier than I would have guessed if I had just looked at the cover. That's actually one of the reasons I wanted to make this pattern, because after I read through it, I saw that it was done just row by row, and I thought, well, I can do that. This is something that looks kind of fun and not as hard as I had anticipated. Now the pattern does come with a really nice diagram that tells you exactly what goes where in each row. And you can already start to see this turquoise blue weaving underneath that dark navy. Now I sometimes get questions from viewers. What do I do if I don't have a big table? I can't lay out the whole quilt. And so what I will do in that case is, you can do that for this quilt easily. Just make one row, sew the pieces together, and then put it aside. Now you can put a sticker on it so you know that's row number one. Then you can sew row number two, put it aside. And you can only make it row at a time anyway, so it doesn't matter if you lay the whole quilt out or just lay out one row. Now we're starting to see the star that goes in the middle. And these pieces that look like diamonds in the pattern here, it looks like they're gonna be diamonds. They're made with our half square triangles. They're not made with diamonds and there's no Y seams. So the other way to get a nice star is to use diamonds and Y seams. But there's a couple of reasons why they're a little bit trickier. So when you cut a diamond, you're going to be putting your strip on diagonal and cutting the diamond shapes. But once you have them cut, you're going to get different grains. So these, the straight grain is here, the straight grain is here. And so sometimes if you have a whole bunch of diamonds, you're putting them together, you've got to be careful. This one's going that way, this one's going this way. It won't lay very flat, so you need to keep aware of the grain. Now the shape here, it's a Y. That's why we call what putting all these together with a Y seam. So we've got to get a background piece in here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to stitch this seam here. And I've got my diamonds with the straight grain here, so I can put them right sides together, but I can't stitch the whole way up. I've got to stop a quarter inch from the edge. So I'm going to put a little pencil mark there. And you can either start at that end, put your needle down there, and I'm going to back tack a little so it won't come apart. And then you can sew all the way off. Now this piece is going to have to get stitched in there. And again, it might help if you put on the back side a little pencil mark at the quarter inch spot. So we are going to put this pencil mark right where that pencil mark, you can't see it very well because I stitched over it, but you can take a pin and you can put a pin right through where that pencil mark was and right through there. Let's see, I don't have it perfect. Let's get it right in there. And those are gonna line up and that's where we're gonna wanna stop stitching. So we can line these up and we can stitch down here. So what I'm doing is lining up these edges and I'm going to stitch right to where that pin is. So I'm just gonna start here. And of course, as I get near the pin, I'm gonna take it out before I get there, but I'm just gonna slide everything down. So the pin is right here. So I'm gonna to wanna to stop. You might have to feed the last few stitches by hand. Back tack a little. Now we've got two of the three seams and we need to sew this seam. So we're gonna use the same procedure. These edges are going to get lined up and we don't have to put the pin through now because everything is already held in place by our prior two st stitches. So I'm just going to sew right 
along here. And again, when you come to this spot right here where your other stitching was, you're going to want to stop. You might have to feed it by hand. Back tack a little. Now, when we open everything up, it's going to lay nice and flat. So this is how I would normally make a star with diamonds and Y seams. But with this pattern, we don't have to do any of that. It's all made with these half square triangles. All the pieces are laid out and all we have to do now is stitch it together row by row. Now the first two rows only have one seam in them, so they're pretty easy to stitch together. So I pressed the seam allowance in this seam to the left, and then the next border, that seam is pressed to the right. So they're pressed in opposite directions, and I'm going to keep alternating all the way up. And that way, when we come to a place like this, where we've got two seams meeting, they will be going in different directions, and they will nest, and it'll be really easy to match them up. Now this third row, it's got a few more pieces. So you've got options here. I'm just going to put a couple of pins in. I'm going to pin everything the exact way it's going to go. And then I will unpin and reposition them right sides together when I get to the sewing machine. So all I'm going to do here is take out the pin and then put these two pieces right sides together line everything up and stitch. And now that I'm at the machine, I don't, came unthreaded there. Now that I'm at, at the machine, I don't remember which way the seam allowances are supposed to face. So I'm not going to finger press this row. I'm not gonna finger press these seams until I get the row done and I put it back next to the other rows. Then I can tell which way the seam allowance should face. So this method works really good when you have some long pieces and some short pieces. Just pin them all exactly the way they're going to be in the finished row and then take just the two pieces at a time and put them right sides together. So all I have to do now is check the seam allowance here and it's going to the right. So I want this row, I want all these seams going in the opposite direction. So I'm just going to poke them that way and finger press the whole row this way. And I'm going to continue doing this method where I put a little pin in each piece facing the way it's going to go in the row. And I'm going to make every row and keep alternating the direction of those seam allowances till I have all the rows stitched together. Now each row is stitched. Everything is a whole row here. And again, because I alternated the directions that the seam allowances are going, in these rows where you have a lot of patchwork, every place the patchwork comes together, like right here, the seams are going in opposite directions. And that makes it a lot easier to get all of those intersections lined up. Now, this is optional. I like to take each row and iron it before I sew the rows together. And if I'm not sure if I'm going to get a row turned around, I will sometimes take a sticker. This is just a, it's just a shipping label sticker. And I can put a little bit of one on each end of the rows. You can't see the white on the white, but the sticker is still there. And that way I know that all of the, these this is the end that all the stickers line up on and I won't get a row turned the wrong way. So all I'm going to do here is make sure that those seams are still laying the way that I finger pressed them. And then I'm going to give them a little bit of steam and this really flattens out the border. And I'm also just making sure that it's nice and straight. You know, you could iron it crooked like that. You want to make sure it's straight as you iron. Now that all the rows are ironed, it'll be really easy to get them all stitched up 
then we'll be ready for borders. And you may be thinking, wait, there's already some borders on there because we've got these here, and those way up there, and they are borders. They're what I call floating borders. And their function is to make a square quilt, which this is, this patchwork part is all square. Their function is to make it rectangular. So they're floating only on the top and bottom. Then I'm gonna add two borders all the way around to finish up the quilt. Then I can get it on the quilting machine. I've got the three outside borders onto the quilt, and it's a really big quilt. I'm very happy with how it looks. We've got all the colors represented in the borders you can see here, except for the one purple that's down in the middle. And that gives us a lot of good options for thread colors. So my first instinct was to use this light blue. We could use a darker blue, but I think that'll show too much on the white, but it blends in very well. Now this dark, it's kind of a dark lavender, Again, we're not going to be able to see it on very much at all any of these dark areas, but if you can see it on the white down there, it's going to be pretty prominent. And I'm sure this dark blue, which matches very well, is too dark for me there. This one is a little bit lighter lavender. Now, it doesn't show much in the white. It blends in pretty well here. And even as we take it up to the darkest area, there's purple in here and I think this is really going to be our best choice. Now for the quilting pattern, I wanted something that was not geometric and I didn't want flowers, I didn't want leaves, I wanted something kind of abstract and this one called flowing ribbons should be just perfect. It should soften all the hard lines in the quilt and fill up all the negative spaces very nicely. I've got the whole labyrinth quilt all quilted and it turned out nice and big. It's 90 by 110. So that would fit on your queen size bed with a nice big drop. I'm really happy with the quilting pattern that I used. You can see a little bit of these swirls in the light and they recede a little bit in the darker areas, which is good because I really wanted those intertwined labyrinth parts to really show up. The grunge is a good choice for this pattern because it's got, you know, little color changes, but acts as a solid. I also used a grunge on the back side. So this is a nice blue and you can see the purple thread showing up just a little bit more because it contrasts some. Really happy with how this turned out. Now, one thing I want to mention about this pattern, it's my favorite kind of pattern. It's easy to make, but it looks really complex. So if you're a beginner quilter and you want to make something nice and big, this would actually be a really good choice. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on the Labyrinth Quilt. We hope you enjoyed it. Now, we're going to have a giveaway. This pattern is called Cotton Rainbow. It's also done in grunge. It's made with a jelly roll. And we did a tutorial on how to make it. But today you can win it. So just click the link below that says giveaway and put in your email address and your name. And remember, we can send this to the winner anywhere in the world. So good luck. Now, if you like our videos and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would really help us out. Happy quilting.